In this video, we have recorded some of the steps needed to assemble a double polyethylene heated high tunnel. There are two extension publications that accompany these videos. This is an effort to make establishment of a heated high tunnel easier for growers and farmers. Once you have reviewed our extension guides and have decided on whether to buy a greenhouse kit or assemble the parts yourself, you must place the orders. Allow three to four weeks for all of the frame parts to arrive. In the meantime, level the site you have selected. As mentioned in our guide, this site should be near roads and all utilities with the long side of the tunnel running north to south. Exceptions may occur. For example, it is advisable to orient the long side of the house with prevailing winds. Clear the site of weeds. There should be at least about two feet around the tunnel footprint. Weed barrier, rock, or just clean cultivation of this area is recommended as this dramatically reduces pests and diseases in the high tunnel. Once the parts have arrived, the first step is to lay them out and group them. If the tunnel is a kit, instructions on the assembly should be included. It is essential to identify all parts before construction starts. In general, first you will measure and mark the leveled area for the number of posts that you will sink and the end walls. After digging each footing, be sure that they line up. Then you can pour concrete and install the sleeve that will receive the post that will span the width of the house. The bows are then set into position on the ground posts. As each bow is flipped into position, the ridge piece and continuous lengths of reinforcing pipe along the sides that will connect the bows and run the length of the house will be installed. This ensures the spacing between bows will be maintained as well as support the exterior covering. Keep in mind that the number of purlins is key to supporting the whole house. We recommend a minimum of six purlins and one ridge member. At the base and running the length of each side of the house, install a baseboard to the bottom of the bows. To this baseboard, attach a polyethylene retention system such as polylock or wiggle wire. This also supports the structure while holding the double polyethylene roof in place. Next comes the end walls. The end walls are framed first, allowing for a door on each end. Then they are covered with either polycarbonate or plywood panels. Again, this adds support to the structure. Pink insulation board or spray foam can be applied. To increase available light, the north end walls can be coated with a reflective coating such as silver paint or even aluminum foil. Once the structure is set and secure, the double polyethylene cover must be attached. This is best accomplished on a day with no wind. The preferred method is to unroll the first layer of the gusseted plastic down the ridge from edge to edge and undo the folded gussets towards the ground. Secure to the baseboard temporarily in case a breeze comes up. Then install the second layer on top of the first layer. Permanently, secure both layers of the poly using wiggle wire continuously down the lengths of the heated high tunnel and over the end bows. There should be no gaps in the connection. Once the first layer of polyethylene is secure, the second layer should be pulled on. The wiggle wire or polylock should be secured all the way around the frame. Once this is accomplished, the shell of the structure is complete. You can then install the air intake hole and connect the inflation fan that will pump air between the two layers. The inflation fan air intake hole should be in the end wall in order to bring in outside air. Use a dryer vent mounted into the end wall with a jumper hose. This will reduce water accumulation between the polyethylene sheets.